Hi, here's a short tutorial uh, showing how to design the main reinforcement for a simply supported slab that we'll say is spanning five meters. Well, here's a plan showing the slab and it's supported on two beams and its span I'm saying is five meters. I've written out a few um, base basic pieces of information about the slab. It's um, the concrete strength, the steel strength, the slab depth, 290mm, so I can mark that on here if you like. That's 290mm. What the cover is to the reinforcing bars, we're using H12 bars, it's got a span of 5 metres we've mentioned before. Uh, I'm designing this to EC2, which is the Euro code for concrete, and I'm using factors of safety for the loads, for the dead loads 1.35, for the live loads 1.5. Density of concrete, reinforced concrete I should say is 24 kN meter cubed and the live loads acting on this slab are 5 kN a meter squared. What I'd, like, what I'd like to do first is, is think about, is tot up all the loads acting on the slab that I'm going to design. So I'd really like to work out what the load is on one square meter of that slab. One meter, one meter. So I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm going to work out what the dead load of that is. What's the self weight of that slab? Well, the self weight of that lump of concrete, reinforced concrete, is simply its volume 0.29, that's one meter, that's one meter. So it's 290 mil deep, so it's 0.29 meters deep. It's its volume times the density, that's going to give me the uh, self weight. Great. So let's start working on the loading. So here, here are my calcs loading. There we go. Slab, self weight, and the volume we said was 0.29 by 1 by 1. So that's 0.29 meters cubed times the density of reinforced concrete. The density of reinforced concrete is 25 kilometers per meter cubed. When I multiply those two things together, I get 7.25 kilonewtons. So that's per meter squared of slab. So every square meter on plan of slab, every square meter weighs 7.25 kilonewtons, so that's got a load, 7.25 kilonewtons, and you could write that as 7.25 kilonewtons a meter squared. Now the live load, I already know, is 5 kilonewtons a meter squared, and now I can calculate the design load, and the design load is made up of the, uh, the factored live load plus the factor dead load. I'm going to consider the design load for just one square meter of slab. So here's the dead load times the dead load factor added to the live load times the live load factor. I'm going to multiply out and add together. That gives me 17.3 kilonewtons per square meter of slab. Now if I consider my slab which is spanning between the two beams and I consider my one meter wide strip of slab there we are, one meter wide now this slab every square meter of it weighs 17.3 ki kilonewtons so the next square meter weighs 17.3 and the next and eventually I can calculate this is very similar to a UDL spanning 5 meters, simply supported slab spanning 5 meters with a load of 17.3 kilonewtons for each meter run of the slab. So knowing that, I could say that this is W, this is L, and I can calculate the bending moment based on WL squared over 8. So 
the bending moment at the center of the slab it's going to give me a bending moment which is sagging down in the middle that's the bending moment at the center the bending moment is wl squared over 8 which comes out to be 54, point, uh, 54 kilonewton meters now the next job we have to do is to calculate the effective depth and to do that the effective depth is the distance from the top of the slab to the centre of the steel reinforcement. I've drawn a cross section here BB through the slab showing the effective depth from the top to the centre of the reinforcement. The overall depth is 290. The depth to the depth to the face of the bar from the face of the concrete, which is the cover, is 45 mil, and as the diameter of the bar is 12 mil diameter, then the distance from the face of the bar to the centre of the bar is this divided by 2. Let's have a look. So the effective depth 290 mil minus 45 cover minus the bar diameter divided by 2. 239 millimetres. Great. Now what I can do is I can calculate MU which is the ultimate bending moment capacity of the slab with no compression reinforcement. And that comes from this formula K lim FCK B D squared. Okay, you can see it's handy to know D before I start with this. K lim for simply supported slab, no redistribution of moments, it's always 0.168. FCK, we know this from the start, we know it's 32 newtons per millimeter squared. We've got B, the width of the slab. Well, we're just considering the design of a, of a meter width of slab. And D, 239 all squared. That's, this is made up of newtons per millimeter squared and millimeters, millimeter squared. And it's going to give me an answer in newtons and millimeters. So I want my answer to be in kilonewton meters. So I've just converted it by dividing it that way. And that all comes to 307 kilonewton meters. So my applied moment is 54. Capacity without compression reinforcement or resistance is 307. I'm in by a mile. Right. Now I've checked MU. I can go on to try and find Z, which is the lever arm between the compression in the concrete and the tension in the reinforcement. And I do this in two stages, making use of a little uh, graph. Uh, from an I struck D publication. So the first thing I do is I have to work out just a, a factor which is K. K is simply M over B D squared F C K. You know what all of these um, all of these elements are and we want them in the same unit so I'm going to take M as 54 and convert that into Newton millimeters. B D squared so a thousand times 239 squared times FCK which is 32. All this comes out to 0.0295. Great. Now we're going to make use of a figure which I've taken from uh, the I stroke D manual for the design of reinforced concrete buildings. A uh, good little book. Have to look. This chart can be used to find uh, lever arm Z using this curve or neutral axis X using this curve we're finding the lever arm Z so this axis K I punch in 0.0295 which gets me about here run up to where I hit the graph yes hit the graph here and then I run left to the axis which deals with lever arms Z over D so I run across to here and I figure that that's around about 0.975 something like that so I just add this here so Z over D equals 0.975 well that means that the compression zone in the concrete will be absolutely tiny and generally we adopt a limit of uh, Z over D being no more than 0.95 so that's what I'm going to do here this means that Z 
is going to be 0.95d. Great. Now I know the z, I know my bending moment, I can find out the area of steel that I need for the, um, for the slab. And the area of steel is found from this equation, m over 0.87 fykz. Right, the bending moment, I know that, 54, that's the applied bending moment, I'm going to convert it into Newton millimetres, divided by 0 0.87 times Fyk. Fyk, we know from the start, it's got a value of 500, so that, I multiply that by Z, which is the lever arm, which I know is 0.95D. 0.95 times D, which we calculated earlier, at 239. Multiply that out, and I get a value of 547 millimetres squared. Right. So for every every metre width of this slab, let's say that this is a metre from here to there, that's a metre, the amount of steel in the bottom of the slab must, must be at least, what have I got, 547 square millimetres. Great. I'm going to make use of some sectional area tables, which are pretty common. Uh, I'm sure that you can Google them and just download some off the internet if you don't already have some. And uh, usually these tables, are, uh, uh, two types of tables are used. One which relate to the number of bars, which give a certain area of steel, and another which relates to the spacing of bars, which give a particular area of steel. And we're going to use the spacing table. So the bar size is 12 mil. I'll run across here until I make sure that I've got the correct amount of centres so that I'm providing at least 547 square millimetres of steel. So 12 mil bars, I have to provide them at 200 millimetres centres and that gives me 565 square millimetres of steel. So we provide H12, 200 centres, and that gives 565 metres squared per metre run. Great. Well, that's the uh, that completes the design of the uh, steel reinforcement in the bottom of the um, in the bottom of the slab. So the main steel would be placed just about here. In the bottom, so it carries the main bending moment in the middle of the slab. Now we can carry this onto the supports, or we can curtail it and put some slightly smaller bars at the supports as long as we lap them with that main steel. Okay, and we can do that. When I'm sizing up these smaller bars, the curtailed steel, I have to use couple of rules of thumb which are which are actually based on an old British standard however uh, for simplicity if the main bars are h12 at 200 centers I can knock them down to h10 at 200 centers over the supports I need to make sure that my bars have a reasonable anchorage beyond the centre line of the support and that anchorage has to be 12 diameters. In this case 12 diameters is 120 mil. I have to make sure that my main bars run to reasonably close to the support and in fact I have to stop them off at 0. Oh, I'll have to get this correct. It's 0.08 times the span which in this case is 5 metres, so I can stop them off 400 mil from the centre line of the support. And that finishes this tutorial. Thank you.